Hi, I'm Black Bright, and like I say, if you have anything you want me to research or look up for you, just send me an email, blackbrightnews at gmail.com. The spelling is underneath the description below. Um, today I decided to do a video about black men mainly, um, about their lot, about their attitude to um, education, because I was thinking the other day, I was doing that video um, about why some of them are illiterate even in their 50s and 60s and 70s and um, I was thinking back on that and I thought to myself you know when you think about um, when you think about the history of the black man they were always just um, cannon fodder they were just there to do a job they were just there to plant the fields and they weren't meant to be educated the white people only educated those um, who had who were sufficient enough to give instructions to get things done but they weren't meant to be educated they were meant just to be um, bucks I think they call them you know just to um, well studs and they were just there to work and just when they when they had when they couldn't work anymore they were just killed or whatever they did with them they were never humanized they were never given respect and shown dignity they've always had historically until now they've always been shown in a humiliating light in a degrading light and so when you think about them coming to the UK with that history a lot of that is still in their psyche. A lot of that is telling them, you know, what is the use of education? It's too difficult. I can't learn it. It's or it's too expensive. Of course, you've got those people who, you know, defy the odds and who will go and do something because they probably had a different background. But the majority of them just don't think it's worth it. You know, they look at people who are educated and a lot of them can't even get jobs. So it's like, why bother if I'm going to go through all the education? It's not going to do me any better. And I can make money and look after my family doing manual work. So they would go and they'd um, wash trains or be bus conductors or whatever they needed to do. And they got along and they were paid. The only thing is, and it didn't really matter whether or not they had an education, to be honest. They could get by, they could chirp up the woman, they could, you know, they knew enough, you know, about their finances. They always knew how to check their money and their salary so they weren't stupid. So the education wasn't deemed that necessary back then. But now that um, the UK has become deindustrialized and, you know, things are more automated, now education is important now they'll feel the pinch but you have to ask yourself why is it that they were denied why do they you know you hear the saying there's nothing more dangerous than a nigger with an education what is it about the black men that once they're educated they become feared by white people or by white men in particular I was watching a Carla the other day and he was on Good Morning Britain. Um, for those of you who've never heard of him, it's spelled A-K-A-L-A. -A -A. And he's a black, he's actually mixed race, but he's a black, he considers himself black. He's a black man who's very educated and he challenges anyone. And they always have him on these debate shows and he's like a little train going off and he's so educated and he gives everybody a run for their money. And I often wonder what white men who are talking to him, how do they feel? Do they feel as though he's a little upstart or do they actually feel as though they're on level play, um, playing fields and they can actually have a good debate and they don't feel threatened by him? And if they don't feel threatened by him, why is there that sector of people that do feel threatened by black men who work hard, who have good jobs, who are educated, who look smart and who are just as equal as they are? 
Why do they feel threatened by that? Why do they have to pull them down? Why do they have to criminalise black men and stop them from um, achieving? Why is it important for them to be separated from women and throwing them in jail? You know, is it because they don't want them to be able to have children? Is it because they just want to keep them segregated and make, turn them into homosexuals? I, you know, I, I, I wonder what it is. I mean, I was listening to um, this guy. What was his name? Chris something or other. Anyway, he was talking about a young boy. He was 14 and he was in a car. And he, um, the police stopped him. And if you, if there was a gun in the car, and if you didn't own up to the gun, the whole family would be taken in to jail. So he owned up at 14 to own in the gun. And he was placed in detention for two years. And in the end, he ended up not getting any parole. And he was, he's in jail until he's 70, seven zero just for admitting to having a gun that wasn't even his. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, what, why are black men being, you know, shoved in prisons? What is it about that situation? The only thing I can think about is that it's, a, it's another way of slavery, isn't it? They're locked away. They're, they're, they're not allowed to do what they can do. They're not allowed to be with women. They're not allowed to be, um, they're not allowed to behave like men. Their, you know, their sexualization is taken away. They can't, they can't um, have sex with women. I mean, I don't know if they still allow um, conjugal rights in prison. I don't know. I haven't heard about that for ages. But it's, it's just so dehumanising. And you, when you think that there's so many of them in there and now they're doing the stop and search to criminalise even more, you have to wonder why that is. And also the introduction of the Social Security, that was another way to separate um, black men from black women. Because what would happen is, is that, you know, black women got with black men and then the black woman, they find out that, you know, depending on the type of men that they were with, they were unable to support them. So income, social security um, with the what, you know, the, the saviour who was giving them child benefit, um, helping them with their rent, um, giving them housing. But what was the condition? The condition was you can't have a partner. So black women were shoving black men aside. They didn't have no use for them. They were being funded by the state. And this is a sector. This isn't all of them, of course. This is a sector of people. But I'm just showing how black men have been um, pushed down and separated. And I'm just trying to ask myself why it is. What is it? That might be so scary when a black man is educated. When I see a Carla and, you know, you read books by W.E. Du Bois and all these big writers and you kind of think, whoa, you know, but I don't think, whoa, because he's a black man. I just think, whoa, because he's an educated human being. And I also think when I'm at work. I mean, I'm interacting, the majority of my colleagues are white. I don't think that I'm any different from them. And I don't get the feeling that they think they're any different from me. There's no power struggle. There's no competition. We don't have to put each other down or lift somebody up just because. So why is there a segment of people who feel it's important to put black people down and make them feel less than what they are? Why is that? And I often wonder about those people who were um, who didn't have no exposure to black people and who believed that black people were uncivilized, were aggressive, were thieves and murderers and criminals. And then you see people like um, Sidney Poitier and um, Trevor MacDonald and, you, see, you know, all of these great black role models and they must ask I wonder if they ask themselves how come 
they are not how they've been portrayed to be in our box when we were at school. How come they're not behaving like we expect them to behave? You know, you're still going to have people who try to make, bring out the worst in us. And, you, you know, even when you see the media portray black people on TV, especially if they've done something wrong, they make them look as menacing as possible. And it's all designed to reintroduce that image of black people being dangerous. And the biggest divider is racism. Why do they feel that they have to divide us when we know from experience, both black and white, that we get along? Ordinarily, it's only when people injecting all of this kind of nasty um, lies that problems start. And I don't understand what the, what they're frightened of. What is it about us that frightens them and makes them feel that if they give us a level playing field, something's going to go horribly wrong? If we all get along at work, can we all get along in other situations? Why can't we just get along in the world? I don't understand it. I don't understand that fear. Anyway, I was talking about um, men with education, but it's all a part of the same thing. It's all a part of separating them and keeping them down so they don't feel as though it's worth it. Even those people who came over on the wind rush who were educated, they were forced into manual labour. They were forced to wash buses and do jobs that were below them because they weren't offered the jobs. They weren't allowed to do jobs that, that were commensurate with their abilities. So that it, they was, they've always been kept down, regardless of their intellectual ability. And then now you see um, somebody, a black person who's really good at something, it's supposed to be all a shock. Oh my goodness, oh, I didn't know they could do that. And yet black people were created biggest civilizations in the world. Let me think of the, um, that big place in Benin is one of the um, largest structures even even um, larger than the, the high wall of China or whatever that place is called. What's it called? It's like the big wall? Oh, I don't know what it's called. But anyway, it's, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that there's no need to be afraid. What we need to do, white working class have always also been put down. They've made, they've made to feel as though they're the bottom of the pile. Can you imagine if they accessed education and if all of those fearful black people who feel as though they, they're not good enough and who feel as though they can't be educated or feel as though it's too late or who they feel as though it's just too difficult or too expensive. Can you imagine if somehow whether it's through YouTube, whether it's through Google, whether they went to literally literacy classes, whatever it is. Supposing that they all got educated and were able to engage and debate with everybody who has an effect on their lives and who can make a difference. Those people who are trying to create division wouldn't have a leg to stand on. So, you know, that's how it should really be. Everybody should be equal. I know that there has to be those that have and the have nots, but not to the degree. I don't think it should be forced. It might be by default. The fact that you haven't inherited from the rich, you know, if you're not in a rich family, you haven't inherited. So it might not be by default, but I do believe that those who can work their way up should not be stopped. There shouldn't, and you shouldn't have to disgrace black men who are loved like Michael Jackson and Bill Cosby just because they were loved by so many white people they had to disgrace them and and show them put them out of favor you don't have to be you don't have they don't, these people don't have to feel threatened by black people and I don't know why they are but anyway I don't even know where I'm going with this I'm just venting I guess and that's all for now bye bye